Um, and I can unmute just so you know. Hi, Justine, and hi, everyone. Um, this is Chrissy, and I also have Lauren Robertson here with me, our digital advocacy manager. Hi. Um, we're going to start the Family Advocate Fundraising webinar. It should be pretty short, um, but it'll just be um, a couple basics on why we're doing this, and then a quick walkthrough of how to set up your personal fundraising page. And Justine, I think you're the only person actually on live. Everyone else will be watching this recording. So if you have any questions, um, you should be unmuted on our end, so if you have a question, you can just chime in. Um, you might need to just unmute yourself on your end, so we're good to go. Okay. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi. So we're just going to get started, and I don't think this will take super long. It's a pretty, in, pretty intuitive platform, I should say. But So um, our goals for the fundraising this year, we don't normally have family advocates fundraise. So for those people who are returning um, after having been here before, this is a new thing that we're doing, um, mainly because as background, we actually weren't going to have a summit this year, um, just due to funding stuff at the national level with the organization, we didn't think that it was necessary. But we heard feedback from our family advocates and our CCRNRs and providers and board members that they thought it was really important that we have a presence on the Hill this spring. So we brought up the summit. It's shorter than it normally is. And um, since we didn't have funding set aside in advance, we have to um, we had to kind of pull from some other areas to fund our advocates coming in and to fund the event. And so we're just asking for this commitment from the people who applied to be family advocates with us. Um, so our goal is $300. That's not meant to cover everything or pay for your flight or any of that. It's just sort of um, a buy-in for the family advocates to really commit to coming um, and to help us defray the costs a little bit of the program. So for most of the people attending it, they'll probably cover their flight. Um, and then it also helps bring local awareness to the communities that you all are in about the summit and the mission. So when you're out there putting your fundraising platform out there and sharing your story, it kind of gets your story out there in a way that it maybe wouldn't have been otherwise. Um, in case there's any confusion, we have advocates that are actually coming in from a handful of states that don't need to fundraise. So if someone that's fundraising is talking to someone from Texas or Ohio, for instance, they may be like, why do I have to fundraise, but the person from Ohio doesn't? Um, and that's just because we have a handful of states, you can see on the slide here, that um, are targeted for a project that we're doing with the Kellogg Foundation. Um, and so we set aside money in that project to bring in two advocates this year and next year, the length of the project, um, to um, have them come in funded on that budget. So. That's why if you talk to some advocates, they don't have to fundraise, and that's because they're totally covered under this separate project that we have. Okay, so just a couple steps, and this is where we kind of jump into it. Uh, we have uh, our personal fundraising, they call it peer-to-peer -peer fundraising platform. Um, so you would just create your fundraising account and then start sharing your personal page to your network. So that could be via email, via Facebook, Twitter, whatever. Um, we're going to craft email and social media draft text and graphics to share with you all so that you're able to cut and paste, copy, edit some parts of your personal story if you want, um, add your own images if you feel like it, and then share that out so that people maybe will hear your story and be encouraged to donate to your platform. And we do want you to come to us with questions. Specifically me, although I'm sure Lauren can probably figure them out too, but if they're on how the fundraising platform works, because I've actually been in to like create, and I, I did a test page, so you'll probably see my, my profile up there. So we're just going to jump into it and bring up our actual page. So on our Family Advocate Summit page, which is on the Child Care Work site, you'll see um, links to go over to the Family Advocates Fundraising. This just takes us straight to the fundraising page. And you'll see it's super simple. So we have a thank you for our family advocates, because honestly, we can't do this work without you guys. We can't share these personal stories without you. Um, has some info on the summit itself, and then it has a button to create your fundraiser. Uh, you see there's top fundraising individuals. This is my picture, um, apparently from Facebook, because <laughs> um, I created my account linking to my Facebook page. So um, if I were fundraising, which I don't have to do because I live here, um, it would show up here. So as you guys start your fundraising, the um, top fundraisers will actually be listed here. So it's kind of a little fun competitive thing if any of you are competitive at all. 
I'm actually not especially competitive, so I'll be at zero forever because I can't seem to delete my practice profile. So what you're going to do is go to this page, which we'll be sending the links out. You're going to click on Create Your Fundraiser. That's going to take you to uh, registration details first. Let me see if it'll let me create a second one under my name. So your first name, last name, and your email address will be entered here. And then you'll click the Next button. It'll ask you to either create an account with this information or to continue with Facebook. When I created my test account, I had some issues with Facebook. Um, they said they should all be fixed now so that you can continue with your Facebook login if that's easier. Or you can just click on create an account and it'll just ask you to create a password. So I'm going to enter in a password that I want to use to log into this. I'm going to agree to a waiver that basically says, you know, it's the same thing that you agreed to when you signed up to apply to be an advocate. If you want to raise $300, you know, we can't refund the money because it goes into our back end system, but anything over 300 will apply to other advocates who are also fundraising. So it might, the money still goes towards the program. Um, so you'll sign off on that waiver with the checkbox. And then you'll call this page something, your fundraising page. Uh, since Justine's actually on the call, I'll use her as my guinea pig and I'll say, um, Justine, if you wanted to call this, send Justine to DC or Justine's fundraising page. <laughs> Um, this is very creative, Chrissy. Hey, I'm pulling this out on the fly. I'm going to call this Chrissy's fundraising raising page because I already created a sample one with send Chrissy to DC. Um, and then the fundraising goal. The default is 300. You're super ambitious and want to raise 500 or $10 million, whatever it is, you can put that in here. And then you're going to click next. This will confirm, and my browser's asking me to save this password. I'm not going to do that. but. And it's going to say it's charging you zero dollars because we're not actually charging you to set up the page itself. That's just something that we have to do in the back end to have it be a ticket that you can get. And it's going to confirm all this info and you're just going to go to check out. That's it. That's all you need um, as far as info to set it up. If you want to kick off your fundraising with your own contribution, because sometimes it helps other people want to donate if they see a small amount already donated, for instance, like $10 or something, you can do that, but you certainly don't have to. So if you uncheck that box, your payment details, I don't know why this has definitely someone else's info that I probably was entering into the database. Um, you'll put all of your info in here, and then you'll click Submit. Since your ticket is $0, it's not actually going to charge you, so it doesn't ask for credit card information. And then you're going to see that your personal info was created in the back end as a family advocate. From that point on, you'll just click on this complete your fundraising page set up here. And then this is where the fun part starts. So your page will look roughly something like this when you first start. And you're going to be able to upload your own personal story. You can add a profile photo. You can add a cover photo. Um, actually, I, you know, I think what is really fun is adding like a personal picture if, of you and your children if you're comfortable with that because you are a family advocate advocating on behalf of children and families. Um, we do have some advocates who have just really touching, poignant stories, and they want to be able to share that kind of personal aspect, so that's, that's really huge. But adding your photo will also kind of show your friends and family that, yes, this is a valid fundraising page set up by this person that I know. So when you click on editing your story, this is where you would replace the text here. I'm going to say this is Chrissy's story. Child care work summit. So I've got my story here. I'm going to change my profile photo. Let's see if I actually have any. So I'm going to want to upload. I'm going to upload a new image. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to find something on my desktop. I guess I must have last time used my Facebook photo, and that's why I'm holding a bunny. Uh, this time I'm going to create. I'm going to use a terrible photo of me. Please don't judge. This is an awful photo. Oh, no, it's too big. Oh, sugar. Okay, I'm going to use my Facebook photo again then because it doesn't seem to like me. So me and the bunny are now my Facebook um, profile photo. My image was too large, but I selected it has to be smaller. So, And I'm going to say view page. I don't think I have. Oh, I have a cover photo. So a cover photo would actually go across the top of your fundraising page and would kind of add a little bit of personal branding. We have some advocates who have 
um, started nonprofits or advocacy groups on their own. So if they have, you know, a graphic that they want to add to that page, they are more than welcome to do that. I'm going to find something related to child care work so that you guys don't have to look at my face again. I hope that image is not too big. There we go. So this is the picture I'm going to use. I'm going to say save. That looks like a good photo. It's a picture of a baby. He's super cute. And then I'm going to view my page. So this is what my fundraising page is going to look like. So you'll be able to copy this URL at the top and place that at the end of any of your fundraising posts that you put up, and it'll pull into Facebook, Twitter, um, and email. And this is where you can kind of check your page and say, yeah, this looks good, or, oh, I can actually add more text to this because my story looks pretty flimsy here. Um, this is where your donors will start showing up once people start donating. And that's basically it. Um, the setup is pretty self-explanatory. It walks you through step by step. So just make sure you have time to kind of sit down and walk through the steps yourself. But you're able then to share this link out. That's a live page. And people can come to you and donate or maybe message you with questions if they have questions first. If you have any questions that you're getting from people and you're not sure how to answer, like what's the goal of the summit or what exactly are you going to do here, we can always uh, provide you with that information. Just let us know. Um, and that's basically it. Um, and since Justine's the only one on the live version of the webinar, she can ask any questions she has. Um, otherwise, we'll put this up and send out the recording. Okay. Can you actually post on your page uh, what the goals are and possible questions that others may have? So we could just click it and automatically have it there prior. Save some yeah, time. we can totally include that as text if you wanted to copy and paste that into your story, or I could add it to like the main stuff here. So after this information, I could probably add some info on the page that defaults on everyone's page. That's a really good idea. I can totally do that, Justine. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. So we, when is the money actually due? And do we have to make the reservations for the hotel? Because I received an email saying that to make the reservation? <laughs> no, you don't have to reserve anything. You don't have to book your flight. We're gonna take care of all of that for you. They must be sending out information to all of the attendees. Mm -hmm. And since I had to register all the family advocates, you're probably getting a lot of the attendee information as well. I asked them to um, suppress the family advocates from future emails so that we didn't get any confusion. So you don't have to worry about any of that. Um, the money due basically by the time of this summit, um, I'll be honest, like there isn't like a super tight timeline. So like if you don't get it by, you know, the time of the summit, but you want to try to hit your goals still, you can keep your page up and that's not a problem. Um, just let us know so that we don't turn it off. But it's, it's pretty open. So we didn't think this was too much of an ask for family advocates, but it is a lot of money. It's not, you know, pocket change. You could just be like, here's 20 bucks. So we understand that you might need more time to share with people and get out in the community and stuff like that. Okay. Okay, yeah. and then if the individuals don't have Facebook or Instagram or any of that, is there a way they could just click onto the link up on top, the one that you provided on a on a just general computer and donate that route? Yeah, they don't need to be on social media. So if you send it via email or if you, you know you have it on your phone and you want to text it to somebody, this is the link that you would take from your fundraising page once your page is set up. Like okay. mine for the raising page because that's what I called my page. Um, you would just take that URL and send it to whoever, and they don't need to be on social media to donate. If you have, if you're, for instance, at um, like Justine, I know you're also a provider as well as a parent. If you, for instance, put it out and one of your parents at your center was talking to you and you were telling them about this event, you were really excited, and they said, "Oh, I'd love to contribute," and they just gave you twenty bucks in cash. You could mm -hmm. turn around, you know, deposit that in your bank account and just donate that through your own page if they don't want to go online and do that. I think a lot of people are getting cash handed to them. Um, I know Tammy is, I've already talked to her, so that's something that she'll just end up doing like on her own. She'll deposit that and then just make the donation from her account. Okay. Okay, thank you. Sure, did you have any other questions or anything? No, that, was, that pretty much covered everything. Okay, great. And we are gonna be sending out language that you guys can copy and paste and edit if you want to. 
and share out so you don't feel like you're starting from scratch and don't have any idea what to do. Um, but I really like your idea of putting questions that donors might have and answering those right on the page. That's really helpful. So I'm going to take care of that today. Okay. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you so much for hopping on live, Justine. Thank you for everything. Okay. Uh, everything, and we'll see you soon. Yeah, we'll see you soon. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Take care. Bye.